There are a lot of cars that you dream about when you're a kid. And that's kind of the beginning of being a car guy, is dreaming about that car that is insanely special to you, either because of a TV show or a poster on your wall or you know, some hero of you had it or you just have some strange taste. And one of my hero cars as a kid was the Porsche 928. It is probably one of the most amazing cars if you think about the time it came out in, in the late 70s. It was a spaceship. And of course, the star of many movies was in Scarface and it was in Risky Business, of course. It was the car that went into the lake, who's the submarine commander line. And for me, it was the car in Weird Science. Honestly, someday I want both the cars in Weird Science. I want the Ferrari and the Porsche, and I want the same license plates. To me, that would be like a perfect little collection. So I've always looked for 928s. I've never owned one until a few years ago. They were kind of the forgotten Porsche. They were looked down upon for a long time. And they were really groundbreaking. So the Porsche 928 uh, was first like set up, the idea of it was first generated in 1971 when they were like, you know, 911 is only gonna go so far, what's the future? And they worked over the next few years, the, the front engine cars were coming in. Um, the 924 would arrive before that, which of course was an Audi Volkswagen project that Porsche took over. But all the cars up to that point for Porsche were derivatives of the cars before it. So you had the original 356s, those came up and then they became the 911s, but it was all the same pan and structure and engine idea and flat engines and all that. This was the first clean sheet design Porsche had ever done. And at this point, they are a Le Mans winning team. They are groundbreaking you know, engineers for everything that they've done. This is their chance to build something from scratch. And that entire car shares nothing with any other Porsche ever built. It's a front engine car. It's a V8. Have they ever built a V8 before? Nope, so why not? Beautiful V8 up front. It has Vysok rear end, which had passive steering built into it. It is as luxurious as it is beautiful as it is fast. And it was expected that this is the way it was gonna move and the 911 was gonna go away at some point. Well, we all know what happened. 911 never went away. There was some slowdown and disappearance in the early 80s. The turbos disappeared from the United States. People complained and they returned. 911 became you know, the legend that it is. The 928, for Porsche people, was always derided. Oh, it's not rear engine. Oh, it's not you know, this and that. But it was wickedly fast. It handled great, it had perfect 50-50 weight distribution. So any of the previous Porsche things, the rear end's getting loose, not at all. That engine was putting out in European spec, you know, 240 horsepower, which was respectable back then and capable of moving that car pretty quick. A few years ago, my friend who worked at Canapa picked up a 928. He couldn't get it titled. He couldn't get it smogged. And I'm like, I'll take care of it. How much? And he's like, I don't know, a thousand bucks. I was like, great. It's a manual transmission, 928. I took it, fixed everything, got it smogged, found the title and drove it for a while and really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it to a point where there are some cars that fit you. Like when you sit in it and you grab the steering wheel, you're like, this is, if I had to sit in a box and hold the steering wheel and put my feet up, this is the most comfortable position for me. That for me is the 928. Aside from the sunroof, which is too low. Like it's got a sunroof that's that long. Like it t the mechanism takes up the whole roof. So the, the roof is about two inches too low for me. But when you sit in it, it was like, yes, yeah, shift, oh, it felt like I put on a really fancy suit. Eventually I took it to a Radwood, I put a joke sign on the window that it was Tony Montana's, and I put a bunch of fake cocaine on the dashboard as one does at Radwood, and a guy wanted it and he bought it. I'm like, and on my, the 928. But that had lit a fire. I was like, oh, I want a 928. And they're not very expensive, which is really strange considering how expensive they are when they were new. In today's money, they were over 100 grand. This was their flagship model. And 911s and air cool stuff has gone nuts. It's really the 928's time, and it might be right before the 928's time. They're starting to pick up in value. 
And the GTSs, the last version in the 90s, are going for six figures now, like really nice ones. So I'm like, I should start looking for my car, what my unicorn is. And I always look for unicorns. I always, it has to be the rarest version or whatever. And I like first generation cars, like the original design that the designer penned himself. Like the first Countach with the Periscopo and the, you know, no flares on it and big tires, just that original clean design, the original Lotus Esprit, you know, like just super clean. And then they got all bulked up in eighties and horrible. So I wanted like a first year 928 before the side strips and before everything. I wanted a European edition, which had the better engine, no sunroof, sunroof delete. I wanted a five speed. Now, most of these were set up to be kind of luxury cars. Well, most of them were automatics. And I wanted, which made it even more difficult, the Pasha interior. Now, staring at Pasha interior for too long can cause mental issues, I'm pretty sure. It is a psychedelic 70s look, but it's, oh, beautiful 70s. That was kind of my parameter. And I started looking, and there's not a lot of them. I can't imagine there's more than a few hundred in that spec. And then one pops up in Ohio. Call up the dealer. He's like, yeah, it's worth $15,000. And I'm like, you're out of your mind. It's been in your lot for this long. We start jawing back and forth. He's like, well, I'm gonna put it on eBay first. I'm like, you do that. You put it on eBay. You get your money. He puts it on eBay. I watch it. Because the real key to negotiating, the key to buying a car is not getting too attached to it, is to be it, to have the ability to walk away from it. And I was like, I like it, but there's other ones out there, although I really wanted it. And I'm like, I'll let it run through. The eBay auction doesn't go through. Nobody bids on it. Because the seats are a little torn up. I want a car that I'm gonna restore. I'm gonna make it mine. So I don't care about it being perfect. I just have the right spec. And he's like, calls me up and he's like, well, it didn't sell. I'm like, yeah, it didn't sell. He goes, I'm gonna put it on eBay again. I'm like, you, you do that. I'll be the only bidder. And he's like, no, you're not. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be the only bidder. I will bet you I'm the only bidder. Guess what? I was the only bidder. Because he started bidding at $5,000. $5,000. Ship it out. He was not terribly pleased by this. I got the car out to my house. We clean it up, see what you got. It was a Texas car originally, no rust. Everything's there. And I'm like, yeah. And I start making my plans. And what am I gonna do? We're gonna tear it down in the tub. We're gonna make it perfect. So I put it, what you do nowadays with the internets is you put it on Facebook and go, look what I got. And I said, look what I got. I got, I got my 928. I'm gonna build this up. And in a day or so, a friend of mine writes me and he goes, oh, I hear you're in the 928s. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He goes, I got a friend who's got a 928. I'm like, that's awesome. I'd love to meet him. He goes, no, you probably could buy it as a parts car. I'm like, what is it? He says, it's a 79 automatic, but a Euro car. And I'm like, I could use a lot of stuff off of that. How much for that? And he's like, I don't know, a couple thousand bucks. That is worth parts alone, absolutely. So I call up the guy, really, Nice architect down in San Jose. He's had it for years. It was kind of, he it was a German import from, I guess, his previous boss. And we go down there and I bring mechanic Matt and we bring an extra battery and it's been dead in his driveway for a while. And we get it, jump it, boom, it fires right up. And you can see the guy's face go, oh, it's not a parts car. This car works. I'm like, yep, I'm going to drive it on the trailer. And I did. So we brought that home. I'm thinking, God, I've got the car I want to drive and I've got a parts car, very similar parts car of year. I'm good to go. So what do I do? I got a parts car, put it on the old Facebook and somebody writes me and they're like, oh, you do? I got a parts car you can have. Okay, Wh what is it? He goes, I don't even know. It's a 928, I've got four of them. It's my parts car, but I need to move. So I need it out of here. And what was interesting was my car was advertised as a 79, but it was a 78. The first parts car was, he thought was a 78, was a 79, and the, his parts car turns out to be a 78, a US 78. I'm like, all the parts I'm ever gonna need, I can build two cars now. I drive down to this guy's house, we strap it on, get all the associated parts and bits, and he was worried about mice, it was parked outside, but he took the entire interior into his house. So the interior was perfect. Like the seats, have you ever seen 928 seats? They are really cool. They're all perfectly inside. I'm like, okay, I can sell the interior for whatever the gas costs come down here. Now I've got three 928s. That might be too much. But this guy has four. Now I have one of his. 
and he's got two others. He's got his daily driver. He's got one that's kind of a track car. And he's got one that he had dumped like $40,000 into at this place called Devic in California that used to be the place to go to for hot rodding your 928. They had records, you know, they had 600 horsepower 928s so that did 200 miles an hour. They built these amazing 928s. Problem is, they were, they were doing all of this stuff when 928s were still worth five grand. And a five a guy who buys a five thousand dollar nine twenty eight isn't going to drop thirty thousand dollars into it unless you're this guy. He had got the big brakes and he had gotten the stroker motor and he had all the cool stuff. And I guess he went drag racing with it and blew the motor, took it to Devic. Devic goes out of business, and he has to go pick up the car with no engine in it and all like the all the expensive bits. Like its crank was worth thousands of dollars, a special long stroke crank, which apparently he told me the tow truck driver stole on the way down. But all the other trick bits are there. He's like, well, how much do you give me for that? I'm like, I now have three 928s. I don't need any more. He's like, well, make me an offer. I'm like, I, I don't even know where to start. Like, I don't want it. I don't want your car. That's cool. I want the parts off of it. That'd be cool. You know, S4 brakes, all that stuff would go on my car pretty easily. He's like, well, I'm moving in a couple months. He says, make me an offer. I said, listen, I spent a couple grand on my other parts car. I'll give you a couple grand for it. He's like, oh, no. I, I spent $35,000. I have all the receipts. I'm like, that's great what you spent on it. That's not what it's worth to me. I don't want your car. Drove home. And now my wife's like, how many of these things are you going to get? I'm like, well, they look really nice lined up on the driveway. I mean, they're, you know when they're under covers, that all is very, you know, a lot of symmetry, beautiful. No, she's like, you better start getting rid of some of these things. I'm like, I know. And like, it, it, what happens is parts cars have a tendency to dig themselves into the ground and never move ever again, unless you get the project started. So I'm like, we, we made a plan. We're gonna get the 928 started in the winter and I'll get rid of these cars. We'll take what we need out of them and move them along. And two months pass, and guess what? The guy calls. He's all like, I gotta move. I'm like, yeah, you said that. He goes, well, how much are you offer me for the car? I'm like, it's a couple grand. And he's like, no, no, it's worth a lot more than that. I'm like, my offer hasn't changed. Your situation has, mine has not. He's all, that's not fair. I'm like, I, I can't help you. I'll, I will drive down there with a couple thousand dollars and give it to you. And he's like, $5,000. I'm like, no, $4,000. No, I'm like, this is the easiest negotiation ever. All I gotta do is say no. Finally, we came down to a couple of grand because he just needed it out there. And I mean, he had the original engine for the car because the stroker motor was a second engine. It's all over his shop. So we go down there, we pick up everything, put it, bring it home. Now I have four 928s. Having four 928s, it goes from a passion to almost looking like an addict or something. Like it is, Something's gone horribly wrong when you have four non-functional 928s in your yard. But I imagine it's what it is. I started getting more calls. Like once you have something, people think you're a collector of it. And I put a picture of all four of them lined up and I got emails and messages and you want my 928? Like I could literally surround my house in 928s and probably only spend 20 grand because people were trying to get rid of them. And these are all junky parts cars. The nice cars, you know, a nice 78 is selling for like 40, 50 now. They're starting their climb. And pretty sure over the next few years, the generation that admired 928s like mine are gonna push the prices up because collector cars are generational. My generation likes these cars, they go up in value. As we get older, they slump off, the next generation comes along and suddenly we're like, I don't understand why that car's worth any money. That was just a used car back in the day. It's a passion thing. So 920s will go up, which is one I wanted to get in early. So who knows, if I just keep them and just sit there, that junk car, like a junk 911 now, you is 20 grand, you know? An air-cooled 911, 30 grand for something that barely runs. Like, what if I keep all the 928s and I'll have a whole field of them and they'll be worth, a million dollars. And that's how you meet those guys with the 150 cars in their field that have, at, you know, they're like, come and get them. You know, the county's coming for my cars. And I'm like, I don't need that many 928s. So I have four 928s now. 
I want one. The work has begun. And hopefully, someday, I will have one 928. We're here with a very special LaFerrari and we've got a very special deal for you, our VinWiki audience today from Glossit. Now last year, too many of you responded and you broke his website and his fulfillment process. So we've had to limit this one to just 5,000 units. But if you respond now, you're going to get their $150 graphene ceramic coating along with a $50 gloss enhancer detail spray to make the application easier than ever along with an applicator all for just $69.99. So check them out now at the link in the description below and for just $69.99 get the best package of products we've ever been able to offer from Glossit.